This is the Monstrum Panzer, a 1 to 10 first focal plane LPVO. And this is a Vortex Razor, also a 1 to 10 first focal plane. If you've ever wondered how a budget LPVO compares to a real high end optic, well, now's our opportunity to find out. Hey, Moondog here. I have in my hand a Vortex Razor HD 1 to 10 first focal plane LPVO, and in my other hand, a Monstrum Panzer, also a 1 to 10 first focal plane. Well, we're going to compare a budget LPVO, in this case, one of the least expensive 1 to 10s out there, versus, well, Vortex's top of the line LPVO. And honestly, I don't think it's going to be any comparison. I mean, one's in a whole different league from the other. But I've been wrong in the past. Uh, certainly when I compared a Monstrum to a SIG, the, the differences weren't as clear cut as I was predicting. But uh, why don't you put some skin in the game along with me? Leave me a comment right now. Post a comment and tell me what you think is going to happen here. Uh, what do you think of a Monstrum versus a Vortex? And then after you see the end of the video, uh, after you see my tests, um, leave another comment and tell us if uh, you are right in our predictions about uh, you know the, the quality differences or if we discovered something, well, we weren't expecting. So let's get started. So let's start with what you get with the Razor. It's nice that they included a throw lever and sunshade, but the lens caps are purely protective for shipping. They're not field grade. The Panzer gives you a little bit more with field grade lens caps and a scope mount. In this case, a pretty premium quality offset mount. All right, let's start by comparing their specs. The Razor has a wide 34 mm tube on the body, whereas the Panzer has a more common 30 mm tube, and that translates into a larger range of adjustments. In fact, the Razor has 120 MOA of internal adjustments, nearly double the Panzer's 70. The most obvious difference between these two optics, well, apart from the beautiful burnt bronze finish of the Razor line, is their length. The Panzer is a good inch longer than the Razor, but note that the Razor is missing its optional sunshade, which, if attached, would actually make it longer than the Panzer. One physical difference, which isn't quite obvious until you actually mount the scope, is the difference in weight. The Razor is a good 5-6 ounces heavier than the Panzer, and anybody who's had to ruck their gear for any distance knows the old adage that ounces feel like pounds and pounds feel like pain. One interesting side note is that in the specs, the Razor has the shorter eye relief, but in my own experience, I found the Razor to have a longer eye relief than the Panzer, so take that as you may. Now specs are just numbers and facts on a page. Let's take a closer look at each of these optics' physical characteristics. Let's start with the Vortex. It has a large ocular lens with a thin bezel, so you have a large field of view. In terms of overall fit and finish, it just feels high quality. It's certainly very Gucci. Its illumination controls is a large diameter locking rheostat, and it has 11 levels of brightness, with off between each numerical setting. What makes the Panzer distinctive is the tank tread inspired design on its control surfaces which doesn't just look cool, it offers a pretty effective textured surface for grip. The Panzer has a red and green illuminator rheostat dial with five brightness settings and off in between each of the colors. This is pretty typical of budget scopes. The Razor comes with a slip-on throw lever, but honestly, you may not need it. This is butter smooth. The magnification turns very easily with just the right amount of resistance where you don't feel that the magnification is going to change on you by accident. The Panzer's power ring is smooth, though not quite as smooth as the Razor and a bit stiffer. Fortunately, it comes with a built-in fin-style throw lever, which can be removed or swapped out for a post-style throw lever. Both LPVOs come with capped, resettable turrets. Let's take a close look and listen to them. Ah, oh, nice. Not only are they loud, but this is, they are very tactile positive with no slop at all. All right, that is nice and audible. Not super tactile though. I can hear them more than I can feel them. And there's a bit of slop. You can jiggle these before it indexes. 
Physical appearances aside, let's move on and take a look through the glass. Let's compare them both side by side at one power. As I noted earlier, the Razer has a much thinner frame of tube around its ocular lens, which gives you the feeling of a wider field of view. My camera mount partially obscures this difference, but the Monstrum does have a visibly thicker focus ring around your field of view. This is actually pretty good for an LPVO. Some are worse than others, the Sig Tango for example. Only a few premium LPVOs are as thin as the Razer. Apart from the tube frame, the Razer does appear to have a slightly wider field of view, but note the size of the white car there. The image inside of the Razer looks actually a little bit smaller than it does in real life. Now, I've confirmed this at the range with other shooters looking through the scope, and they've confirmed that the image inside of the scope isn't exactly 100% one power. It looks actually a little less than one power, a little wider. And this seems to be causing distortion and parallax shift as seen in the position and shape of the telephone pole inside the Razer's field of view versus outside in the real world. There's a notable curvature in the shape of that telephone pole in the Razer, which is not evident in the Panzer to the right. Now, this distortion is sometimes referred to as a fisheye effect, and you can see that as we move the Razer around. Now, LPVOs are meant to be viewed with both eyes open at one power, like a red dot. And when you do that, the fisheye distortion effect is far less noticeable. But, as you can see, it is there. Now, when we look through the Panzer at one power and move it around, we're not seeing that same kind of distortion that we did with the Razer. Next, let's compare them side by side at their maximum magnification of 10 power. And we can see how a first focal plane reticle transforms, scales up in step with the scope's magnification. The first thing I notice are some broad similarities in their reticle design, but also some specific differences. Both are T-style reticles, and they both have ranging estimators, but in different places. The Razor's is above the center crosshairs, and the Panzer's are at the base of the T of the central crosshairs. Both have a circle and dot style central aim point. The central aim dot on the Panzer is smaller than the Razor's, but the Razor's outer ring is broken up and has a transparent feel, allowing you to feel like you're seeing more of your target through the reticle. The Razor has a Christmas tree of holdover points for long range shooting, while the Panzer does not, and the stadia lines on the Panzer are a little bit thicker and longer. Both reticles are practical and useful for long range shooting. The Razor feels a little bit more optimized and refined. Now looking through the overall image clarity, here's where things get a little bit interesting. The Razer has an overall sharper image, a little bit brighter and more contrast, and it's consistent from the center to the outer edge. The Panzer is sharp in the center, but notably softer in the outer edge of your scope view. We're looking at the peak of Mount Davidson, 1400 yards away, and this test footage was taken on the same day, just minutes apart from each other. But I can more clearly make out the trail marker sign at the top of the hill through the Panzer than I can through the Razor. And this is a 36 inch steel sign on top of a 8 foot pole, which is a good proxy for an IPSC target at over a kilometer away. And surprisingly, the Razor has more chromatic aberration. You can see that as a purplish tinge on the shadows, uh, visible on the cross on the left side of the hill, as well as on the tree trunks on the right side of the hilltop. This is a bit of a surprise to me, given Vortex's reputation for high-quality glass, or a bit of a surprise testament to Monstrum's quality. The glass on the Panzer is much better than I expected. Certainly not as good as the Razor in some ways, but better in others. Next, let's take a look at reticle illumination. Both the Razor and the Panzer have nearly identical small, fine T-style reticles at one power, making them a little bit hard to make out against a complicated background. To compensate for this, both the Razor and the Panzer can illuminate the central circle dot, making them effectively a red dot scope at one power. Vortex is known for having the technology for extremely bright illumination. The Razor is truly daylight bright. The dot is even visible in the sunlit sky. The Panzer also has an illuminated central dot, but when we bring it down to one power, it's really only CQB or low light bright. When we bring it up against a sunlit wall, it practically disappears. Like many LPVOs, it's not daylight bright. 
Next, I took the scopes out to the rifle range for some live fire and optical testing. We're going to be looking at these targets from both 50 and 100 yards, and while I walk back out to the 100 yard benches, I want to ask you to take a moment and hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks! Let's bring up the scopes to 10 power and take a look at those reference targets 100 yards away. One caveat here, I could see far more detail with my naked eye than my camera did. That said, the camera is a valid and factual data point. The footage you're seeing here is unmodified and unadjusted. The Razer's image was just better. It is brighter, clearer, sharper. You can see far more subtle detail in the Razer than the Panzer. The Panzer is slightly muddier looking, but you can also note there is significantly more chromatic aberration in the Razer's image, almost none in the Panzer. Next, let's move up to 50 yards. At their maximum magnification, all 10 power LPVOs look their worst in terms of their optical quality. That said, the differences where we saw earlier remain the same. The Razer is just overall brighter, clearer, sharper than the Panzer. But again, we can see chromatic aberration in the Razer, none in the Panzer. Looking at the tan paper target on the bottom left of the reference board, I can make out two tiny 22 caliber holes below the reactive sticker target, though these are much easier to see through the razor. Next, take a look at the US Air Force optical resolution chart on the bottom right of the reference board. It is clearly a white piece of paper in the razor, but looks a bit muddy gray through the panzer. Moreover, in the chart, I can make out individual horizontal and vertical lines down to element 5 in the razor, whilst on the panzer, I can only make it down to element 3. That's still quite sharp for an LPVO, but not quite as sharp as the razor. All right, the Vortex Razor versus the Monstrum Panzer. But before we get started, I'd like to remind you to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It's, it just takes a second, it's absolutely free, but it really helps this channel grow, so I appreciate you taking the time to do that. And full disclosure here, this video is being sponsored by Monstrum Tactical, but I'm not a paid spokesperson, so I'm not gonna be shilling for their products. I told them that I would be brutally honest with how I reviewed these two optics compared to each other, and I think you could see in the video footage uh, that the Razer is by far the better of these two LPVOs. But the differences are remarkably smaller than I would have suspected. Um, but let's start with the optical characteristics. Uh, the optics, it's just no contest here. Uh, the, the Vortex Razer is in a whole nother league by itself. And it's truly a high-end optic. Uh, in terms of, of clarity, uh, contrast, resolution, brightness, yeah, it, it goes to the Razer. Surprisingly, the Panzer had less chromatic aberration at 10 power, so that was a bit of a surprise. In terms of their reticles, very similar. At 10 power, I give it to the Razer though because it has a Christmas tree and it also has finer stadia lines, so that's much better for a long range shooting. Uh, at 1 power, the reticles look so similar. But you're going to be running it with illumination more than likely. In that case, the Razer uh, is truly daylight bright. And the Panzer is, well, average bright, typical bright for an LPVO. So CQB, uh, low light, yeah, okay. But it's not in the same league as, as the Razer. Uh, in terms of their eye boxes, uh, very similar. Uh, and 1 to 10s tend to have fairly unforgiving eye boxes. And that would be the case for the, either of them. Uh, the Razer has a slightly longer eye relief by about a half an inch, um, but yeah, both of them uh, fairly tight eye boxes. Uh, but in terms of practical shooting with either of them, uh, there was really no advantage as far as I could see. I mean, I, I could hit my targets just as easily with either of them, so I won't give an advantage to either of them in, the, in that case. Where they differ is in their warranties. Both have a lifetime transferable warranty, but the Vortex has a no-fault warranty. So if uh, it's an accident or user stupidity, they'll cover you. The biggest difference though is in the price. I just checked on Amazon. The Vortex Razor is going for $2,500. Uh, the, uh, the, the Panzer is going for less than 200. So the question really is, is the Razor 10 times better than the Panzer? I don't know, you tell me. Um, leave me a comment, let me know. But if you're interested in picking up either of them, I'll include product links and more information in my full written review at moondogindustries.com. So definitely check that out. 
And I want to thank um, Monstrum Tactical for lending both of these for me to test and evaluate. Unfortunately, I have to send this uh, bad boy back. But uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. You be safe out there. Moondog, out. Hey, I'd like to know what you thought of this video. Leave me a comment or chat with me on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, MeWe, Instagram, or Locals. And if you want to see all of my videos, go to MoondogIndustries.com.